OK, hi there. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about monetary policy and uh, looking at this question. What is quantitative tightening? Well, many students will have uh, studied quantitative easing or QE as part of their study of monetary policy. Quantitative tightening is the reverse of QE. And it's a deflationary monetary policy uh, that's set out by a nation's central bank, the Bank of England, for example, or the Federal Reserve in the United States. QT, quantitative tightening, is the opposite of quantitative easing. So let's just explain how it works. Well, it involves selling government bonds to commercial banks. Obviously, with QE, the central bank bought bonds off the banks, and that gave the banks extra cash they could use to improve their liquidity and maybe as the basis for lending. Well, QT is the reverse of that. The uh, central bank is selling government bonds to commercial banks, Commercial banks uh, pay for them in cash, so their cash reserves go down. It can also involve uh, the central bank uh, not, not selling bonds, but just letting bonds mature and then removing them from their balance sheet. Now, when commercial banks buy bonds from the central bank, this reduces liquidity or money from financial markets. And in turn, that might then limit the value of the amount of money they are willing and able to lend out to businesses and households and other customers. Now, if the central bank is no longer acting as a purchaser, a buyer of new issues of bonds, uh, this could cause a fall in demand for bonds in the bond market, and that could, other things being the same, cause bond prices to drop. As a result, Keteris Paribus, the yields on government bonds will move a little higher, and consequently, other market interest rates, if you like, that take their cue from the yield on government bonds, they might go up as well. So perhaps, for example, under quantitative tightening, uh, the mortgage market would have less liquidity in it and the cost of a mortgage loan, a fixed rate mortgage, for example, for five or ten years, that might go up. Now, higher loan costs, in theory will then lower the demand for credit within the financial system. Fewer people taking out mortgages, fewer businesses taking out loans. So quantitative tightening, in theory, seeks to if you like, take some money out of the financial system, drain some of the liquidity from financial markets, limit lending, and raise interest rates in, for example, the bond market. Well, that's in theory. Uh, in fact, in reality, quantitative tightening so far uh, has been fairly modest. Uh, central banks have sold some bonds, but the scale of quantitative tightening has been a very small fraction of all the bonds purchased during a decade or more of quantitative easing. easing. And the reality is that central banks will tend to use quantitative tightening with a degree of caution. You see, if they take too much money out of the financial system, if they remove liquidity too quickly, that can cause uncertainty and it can spook the financial markets, leading to erratic movements in bond prices, bond deals and stock valuations. I think the main aim of quantitative tightening is just to basically tighten the belt, uh, normalise monetary policy. We've had a decade or more of ultra-low interest rates and aggressive expansion of central bank balance sheets. So in a way, quantitative tightening is just, a, in, a, in theory, an attempt to normalise where we are, uh, reduce the, the, the scale of bonds bought by central banks and moving base interest rates away from the zero bound. So we'll see what happens to quantitative tightening in 2023 and uh, 2024. But hopefully that was a useful explanation of uh, quantitative tightening. Thanks for joining in. Take care and uh, see you soon.